huge work mistake, forgot an airline crew in a McDonald's in Portugal for five days. What's your biggest work-related mistake? In 1998, I was an airline duty manager in the operation control center. I was like the Maytag repairman. I only worked when there were problems. My job description was to save the operation, meaning, find solutions where there aren't any. In September of that year, Air Canada crews went on strike, so my airline sublet two aircrafts with full crews to operate Air Canada flights. That's minus two aircrafts for my fleet. On the 2nd of September, Swiss Air 111 went down off the coast of Peggy's Cove, a terrible tragedy. Less than eight hours later, one of our flights en route to London did an emergency landing in Halifax because there was smoke in the cockpit. Same thing that had happened to SR-111, except ours was a different aircraft type and only a minor technical problem. Because of all the media retention, the aircraft had to be grounded for over 36 hours to make sure everything was alright. That's a total of 3 aircrafts that I can't use. From that point on, we went into full crisis management. My phones were constantly ringing and I had to solve each and every single problem. When crises like that occur, we're bound to forget certain things. For operational purposes, the crew that was supposed to fly the aircraft back from London to Toronto was sent to Lisbon to fly dead head on to Toronto. Only, the Lisbon flight was subsequently cancelled, and it was the Lisbon World Fair. There wasn't a single hotel room in the whole city and around. M, the crew purser kept calling me asking me what to do. I kept telling her that I was trying to find a solution. To this day, I can still hear her sweet little voice, Berg, it's M. We're stuck in our uniforms, sleeping on the floor of McDonald's, I'm a bridesmaid Saturday. I have to get back. Please Berg, I have to get back. I was so busy, this one got by me. The crew came back the following Wednesday, and she missed the wedding. I still feel extremely bad about it, especially because she was so nice about it. She never freaked out, and she kept her crew calm and they just waited. What's the worst mistake you've ever made? Throw away, for obvious reasons. I was working on one of those TV shows where you do stupid things in public and film people's reactions. In the skit we were doing, a man would be jogging with a stroller containing a lifelike baby doll, and I was going to hit him with a car. The jogger was wearing bright green, they dress funny on these shows, so that you don't mix up the cast with pedestrians. So I'm cruising up to the stop sign in a beat up old Ford, my adrenaline is really pumping, this was my first time actually being involved in a skit. I see the bright green jumpsuit, and I gun it. I hit the wrong guy. It was just some dude jogging with his kid. I realized what happened when the guy I hit didn't jump onto the hood the way you're supposed to in these stunts. I honestly don't remember anything about the incident after that, I was in shock. The dad had a few broken bones, the baby was fine. Needless to say there was a huge settlement paid out. I'm currently pursuing an unrelated career. Firefighter paramedic slash nurse, here I am going to list a few. Throw away account for obvious reasons. I have been doing this for 12 years, fire slash medic 10 nurse 3. In no particular order. 1. Dropped a newborn baby. What it sounds like really, as soon as the sucker popped out she was quite slippery, fell out of my hands right onto an ambulance floor as I was handing her to my partner. In the end it was okay, but the mother almost literally murdered me, understandably of course. 2. Kicked a cardiac monitor slash defibrillator into a pool during a cardiac arrest. The patient was pulled from a pool, and as equipment was getting shuffled around, the monitor got moved, I inadvertently kicked it, and it ended up at the bottom of a pool. They cost about 20,000 each. Luckily there was another one there. 3. Destroyed a garage door by driving a ladder truck through it while it was closing. I was backing up, my spotter wasn't paying attention, someone closed the garage door, and it was destroyed. 4. Set fire to a fire engine. Way too long of a story to type out, but as the officer in charge when this happened, it's my fault even though I wasn't the operator of the engine. But the operator parked much too close to a fire, and the engine ended up on fire, although it sounds worse than it is. Right after 9-11 happened, I had to go from Chicago to our New York City data center. 
we're a stock exchange broker, and this data center was two blocks from ground zero. There was talk that NASDAQ wouldn't be up, and we would have to take over orders for them interim. While we had 6,000 servers in Chicago, we really needed to get our 4,500 in New York City up too. So we're hustling and taking shortcuts when we could, to try to get things up and running. Cooling tower drained, cleaned, refilled. A big ass semi-trailer sized generator dropped off. Begin to fire everything up. We're looking good. Now it's time to start the backup system power smoothing and switch from mains to it. Now this power smoothing system was an ancient beast. We inherited from the previous owners, which was a big iron mainframe set up from the 60s. Now it smoothed power by using a flywheel. I don't know how it all worked, and it had never needed to be restarted before, so this was all new to me, a young 24 year old system administrator. The flywheel was a 10 foot high solid concrete wheel that weighed 4 tons. It spun at 5000 RPMs. To start it, you took off an axis door, applied power to the system, and gave it a little nudge. There was an arrow in chalk pointing one way, so I nudged it in that direction, and it began spinning up. After 2 hours, when it was fully up to speed, you took a timing light and shined it at it to make sure it was going the right way, yes, the system could run in either direction. So, all looks well. So I grab this huge lever that looks like it's right out of a Shelley novel, and slowly push it from bypass to active. As soon as the lever went past the T and active, we heard a dozen large booms, and then a bunch of smaller booms. Complete darkness. Apparently at some point in time, the wheel needed maintenance. And when they were done, they put it on backwards. So, the arrow was pointing in the wrong direction. So instead of positive voltage, I was sending thousands of volts of negative voltage to all of the PDUs and the battery racks. As you could imagine, they don't expect that kind of thing. The big booms were the $50,000 power distribution units exploding. The smaller ones were all of the control circuitry for the UPS. And that's not even the worst bit. So all these booms happen. Then it's dead quiet. We managed to destroy this semi-trailer sized rental generator. But remember how I said it was a 4 ton flywheel? And it took 2 hours to come up to speed? It took roughly that long for it to spin down as well. And I didn't flip the lever back to bypass, so this system is still pumping voltage. 6 fires later. It cost the company close to 2.5 million dollars to get the system working again, and it took over 3 weeks of around the clock work. We're talking replacing everything, the PDUs, the switching system, even the wires down to the street. Didn't get fired though. Damn I miss that place. I accidentally knocked over 2 aisles filled with wine glasses. Lucky for me, everyone was too busy freaking the duck out. There was apparently a customer nearby who also got a few cuts on his legs, that they didn't notice me slowly slipping away and reappearing a few seconds later to ask what happened. No one ever suspected it was me, but I still felt horrible, because it was over a few thousand dollars worth of stuff that I broke, which may not sound like much, but when you're 15 years old working on $11 per hour, 5 hours a week. Wow. You were quick to escape. It's actually pretty funny. It reminds of the time one of my colleagues at the airport dropped a passenger in a wheelchair down a flight of stairs. Well, actually, that wasn't funny. The lady was severely bruised and the girl got fired. On the spot. Well, by me. Accidentally deleted the email accounts for my entire organization. Stopped the command once I realized what happened, but by that time it had wiped out three quarters of the mailboxes, including both of the owner's accounts. That was a dark, dark day. I'll always be careful with RMRF from now on though. Edit, didn't realize this would be popular. To clarify, I was just in the wrong directory when I ran the command. I was trying to empty one user's mailbox, but I was one directory higher than I thought I was, so I ended up deleting all the mailbox folders instead. I screwed up opening a simple valve and shut down a port on my first day on the job. Estimated cost was 6 million pounds. I was a brand new industrial QA chemist working for Exxon, SO. The lab was located in the middle of the plant, it was a two-story glass fronted building slap bang and full view of the control tower. 
This was a production facility, the docking point for ships offloading petrols and fuel oils. The other plans on this strip of the dock were a natural gas cylinder company and four other petroleum companies, all with their own lines, ships and docks. Job 1 was to test the viscosity of lubricant oils at low temperatures. For this job one needs blocks of dry ice. The CO2 cylinders were stored on the first floor, under the stairs at the front where all that glass was. I went down there, box in hand, hooked up to the pipes and tried to turn the wheel on the top of the 6 feet tall cylinder. Unable to budge the damn thing, I resorted to good old brute force, and used a metal pipe to coax that thing loose. Too well. I snapped the handle off, and the whole canister, thankfully secured to the wall, dumped its load of compressed CO2. So, the whole building is now filling up with white gas, and I can see alarmed yellow helmets rushing around in the control tower trying to figure out what was happening. Knowing that they would suspect a fire, I ran out of the building trying to signal that things were okay. For some reason, the sight of a lab-coated dude, running from a building billowing smoke, waving its arms above its head like a maniac was interpreted as a bad sign. They hit the port alarm. The port alarm that sounds like a tornado siren. The port alarm that can be heard throughout the entire city. The port alarm that means all facilities must immediately shut all lines down and evacuate all personnel. Yep. Every plant shut down, and a throng of workers down tools and headed for their evac points. Two of the tanker ships stripped their lines and started to remove themselves from the impending doom. Shutting these facilities down is never done. Ever. It was an mitigated fiasco, and to this day, 15 years later, when I go back to my hometown, I still get tanker drivers beeping, honking and pointing at that guy who shut the port down. Edit, wow, lots of questions. Someone asked which plant it was, it's no longer an SO, but it's the location on Alexandra Road, Dublin. Some asked me what happened about the job. Not much. I finished out the 6 months contract before leaving for another gig. No, I wasn't sued. It was an avoidable accident, and new procedures were put in place, all lab techs now carry walkie talkies on the tower channel. What else could they do, garnish my check for 6 million pounds? That would have meant a whole month's check man. There was a fine applied by the port authority, and there were auditors all over the place 4 months afterwards. I like to think that page 2 of this document was written for me, PDF warning. Even though police dispatch and confirmation are required now before you can hit the big evacuate button, I'm pretty sure the billowing smoke would count as pretty solid evidence of something amiss. The worst part of all of this was I got that job through nepotism, my dad also worked there, just not that day. So after the shitstorm had cleared I headed over to his house. Hey kid, how'd the first day go? I heard the port alarm, odd time for a test, what was happening? A, dad, well the thing is, accidentally uploaded the email templates to the wrong website. The email template I uploaded was from an organic farm company with a message like, if we don't get back to you soon, we're probably knee deep in mud. The company I uploaded it to, yup, funeral directors. My dad always tells of a story when he, an electrician plugged in some wires backwards and blew up a $10,000 piece of equipment. His boss was really cool though, and told him, just consider this a $10,000 investment in your education. Accidentally sent out the salaries of every one of our executives and the owner to about 100 people in the company. The TLDR is that I requested info from HR, just a list of eligible employees for something. And what they sent had the default sheet 1 sheet to sheet 3 tabs at the bottom of the workbook. Sheet 1 was the list I had requested, sheet 2 was for some reason, executive compensation. It sucked. Please disregard earlier message. Those numbers were not salaries, they were just scores in our fantasy football league. I left a huge legal folder for a multi-billion, with a B, lawsuit on the subway. Some homeless guy finds it calls the opposing attorney and ransoms the damn thing. Luckily there was nothing in the file that wasn't secret or not public record. Needless to say I was fired. Damn. That's a ducking smart move for a homeless person.